Okay, so real quick, how to set an EPR on an old case. So this is a Hill case before it was Hill Phoenix. So this is very old, like 30 years old. It's freezing the eggs. We're gonna look at the EPR. Also, one thing I forgot to mention uh, when you're setting a valve is you have to have, uh, where is it, where is it? Right there. Dairy refrigeration manually on. You have to have this valve open. So you could even achieve that by putting on a magnet if you want. I would just recommend manually turning on the solenoid. So we're gonna take a quick look at this EPI valve and we're gonna see. So you wanna hook up on a pressure tap on the side of the EPI valve that's going out to the case, right? This side of the EPI valve is for your suction header. So you need to be plugged into your suction header, you need to be plugged in on the other side of the EPI. Now let's take a look right here. You can see that this is too close. I don't like that, okay? I want at least 10 PSI between my EPI and then my uh, suction header in order to properly set. Some people will say it's five. I'm gonna say it's closer to 10. It depends on the valve. So this valve size might have a pressure drop across it to 10. That's what it might have been designed for because that's a, uh, a uh, medium temp case, right? It might have been designed for that, but I don't know. So I'm just gonna, what I'm gonna do is gonna go over to the Dan Foss controller. We're gonna go, go into here and uh, you're gonna go to rack A. Nope, suction. No, not that suction. This suction down here, this is 15 plus because our circuit 6B is on there. So we're gonna click on that. We're gonna go over to service, okay? Now we're gonna go down, we're gonna find compressors. Okay, these compressors, A1, A2, A3, A3, do the scroll. They're on a different rack over here. This is a subcooling rack, that has nothing to do with over here. So we don't wanna worry about those, but you wanna find your compressors for your rack. So right here, compressor A1, right over here. A2, and you on, A3, and you on, okay? Now we're gonna look at. Where is this going? Okay. You can see that it's bringing down the pressure on the case as well. Now, as this goes down, we need at least 10 PSI you know, maybe five it could be, but we're gonna keep going. So it doesn't seem to be changing the EPI value. So I know that that is more than likely what the value is set to is. So I'm gonna try and see if I can adjust it now. So I'm gonna just do a little turn, turn a little bit. Right, right, we'll close the valve, which raises the pressure on this side as this threads in. It closes the whole orifice and it raises the pressure. Okay, so we'll see. All right, now I'm at 21. Okay, now this is an old case. So normally what I would do is after I show you how to do it, I would uh, I would get up the case specs and I would show you, okay, you know, you set it for the design evap coil, but this is just an old case. I looked up the case specs and they no longer exist. The, the company, there's no longer a hill, the Hill Phoenix, they do not supply or support this product anymore. Maybe if I called them, I could get them to email it to me. But, so, as a rule of thumb, you set, right here, the coil has around 10 degrees colder than the case temperature, okay? So what we're gonna do now is so there's a philosophy on setting these EPR valves is you want to set them as around two degrees warm. Okay, depending on what you're dealing with. Why do you want to do that? Because you don't want them to be slamming open and closed all day. You only want them to be exercised during defrost. So when it goes into a defrost, this solenoid will no longer engage and it will close. And then all day you want it open and you want it to just focus on the size of the orifice as what adjusts the temperature of the case. So if I make this a degree or two warm, so just two degrees warmer, okay, so we're aiming for 25, that's gonna get me a 35 degree um, case temperature, okay? Right down here give me a 35 degree case temperature, and my current target is 33. So what will happen is it will constantly call for it on, keeping this valve open and preserving the life of the valve. 
So you want it about two degrees too warm, maybe a degree and a half depending on your application, just so the valve doesn't slam shut and slam open. So a way that you can kind of meet in the middle is if you wanted to, I could set it to a 24 degree evap and then I could change these to 32. That way the case really isn't warming up all that much. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna set this to 34. Okay, and you can see now we're over that 10 PSI that we need. This is now six, this is 21. Okay, so we know that that EPR is working right. Before it was, before I started recording, it was actually like targeting a 15 degree coil. It's too much. It's too, too much. So we we'll turn that a bit more. 24.3, we'll let that go for a minute. The last going we're gonna go over here, we're gonna change the target. So we're gonna go to settings. We'll go down to target. We're just gonna hit 32. 32, zero, okay. Here we go. And uh, we'll go back. Make sure that the A matches the B. Pretty sure they do. Settings, I'm pretty sure this is settings for both. Yep, the target is 32. The range is plus or minus one. It's a very tight range. So actually, 33 would be fine because the range is so tight that it won't turn on. It, it'll stay uh, running if it's 34. So the 33 is actually fine. I'll come back over here, see this 25. I want it to be 34. I'm gonna come back here, I'm gonna turn it just a little bit. I'm turning it to the left. I'm threading it out, which is opening the office, right? You can see it's going down a little bit. Right, I'm just gonna keep feathering this until I get the desired pressure. You see right now we got a 24 degrees, that's what we're looking for. So now this is gonna to translate to a 34 degree case. The case is targeting 33. So the case will constantly try to pull down to the temperature, which means the valve will stay open instead of slamming closed and shut, which will preserve the life of our valve. And we can see that we have a temperature, uh, a pressure difference of 20, which is more than enough to know that this valve is being set. So what this is saying is, no matter what this thing does here, no matter what pressure this is going under, we can see that this valve will hold the case at the proper temperature that we need it to be, which is around 34 degrees. So, yeah, that's it. That's how you do it. Uh, yeah, like, subscribe, all that jazz and everything. Uh, that's how you set your an old-fashioned uh, EPR for your old case. So remember that 10 degree uh, pressure difference. A quick edit I just needed to make real quick to add it to the end. Uh, if this rises above in pressure, so this goes above that 23 or above this pressure difference between the two, it will raise the pressure in the case. So uh, this valve only holds back if this is a lower pressure, not that this can do whatever it wants. I just want to make that clear. So the suction header, the suction side needs to be a lower pressure in order for this valve to work. So if this were to raise to a higher pressure, the valve would no longer function properly. Just want to make sure I clear that up so you guys understood what I'm talking about. Okay, bye.